Coming up next, I'm going to share five habits to boost your mental agility. And then, are we stuck in a ghosting spiral? There's a new trend of people quietly quitting in their job. And of course, I'm going to coach you up. All right, folks, welcome to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you win at work and in life. I'm Ken. Here we go. I'm going to share with you five habits to increase your mental agility. What do I mean by mental agility? Very simple. Mental agility means this, the ability to think quickly and easily. Quickly and easily. Now, those are two different things. Some of you go, well, quickly and easily. No, they're not They're not two different things here. I, I can think quickly, like, boom, I'm able to process a thought in a moment of uh, crisis, in a moment of disappointment, in a moment of jubilation, a moment of opportunity. I'm able to think quickly, processing quickly. I have something in my mind. I have a discipline. I have a framework to be able to think quickly. And then easily process. Quickly, easily. If you think about agility, you think of a running back. What are they? Well, they're quick, but then they move easily, right? Effortlessly is what we're talking about here. You can't knock them over easily. They don't trip and fall very often. They're agile. They're quick. They move easily, effortlessly. So that's mental agility. Now, why does this matter? Can I tell you what I think one of the biggest problems our world faces today one of the biggest problems that we as humans face, here it is. We are mentally consuming junk food. We aren't just mentally consuming junk food some of the time. I think we're mentally consuming junk food most of the time. Now, what do I mean by mental junk food? Negative news. Turn the freaking news off. There's only so much scrolling of negativity that a human brain can handle. If you don't think it affects you, you're crazy. It does affect you. What we focus on, we act on. So junk food is negative cable news, negative internet news, whatever. Meaning if you're paying attention to the news. And by the way, the news is 99.9% .9 negative. So if that's all you focus on, the world is exploding, falling, and that impacts you. Now, all of that news may be true, but what I'm saying is if that's all you feed yourself or you feed yourself a lot of that, that's a big part of your mental diet, and it's going to have a negative effect on you. All right? How about uh, trashy news, right? Right? People doing stupid stuff, uh, uh, entertainment news that just has no redeeming value at all, right? It's the latest gossip rags, things of that nature. How about gossip in the office? You regularly show up at the gossip table. Hey, 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 what's the latest? It's like TMZ for the office. Give me the latest dirt. Reading negative authors, listening to podcasts that are negative in nature, attacking, shouting, angry all the time. That's what I mean by mental junk food. You know, just as junk food kills the body, nobody's going to disagree with me today on that statement. Mental junk food kills the mind. Mental junk food will kill your mind. We talked about mental agility to start the show. That's what this is all about. How do we come, how do we become mentally agile? By how we train and feed our brain. Yes, that's what we're talking about. And m junk food kills the physical body and mental junk food kills the mind to where you cannot be mentally agile. You cannot think quickly and make decisions easily. You just can't because of the junk in your mind. So what's the solution? I'm glad you asked. I've been working on this for some time. And I'm passionate about this. And so I want to reveal five habits of consumption. Five 
habits of mental consumption. This is what you ought to be, watch, feeding your brain, feeding your mind. Five habits of mental consumption. Here we go. Number one, education. Education. I need to always be feeding myself information that allows me to learn. I'm learning about my physical health. I'm learning about parenting. I'm learning about marriage. I'm learning about my craft, my learning about business ideas. Any area of your life, you need to be constantly learning. You need to be reading, listening, and watching content that allows you to learn. Education is one of the mental food groups. Education. Why? For growth. I am consuming educational content for growth. Number two, inspiration. I am consuming autobiographies, biographies, deep dive interviews of women and men that are very successful. Why? Why do I want to consume inspirational content? For vision. For vision. When I read a biography, an autobiography, or I listen to a deep dive interview or watch something on TV, a great interview of a great woman or man and what they've done, I am inspired to see a better future. What could I do as a result of what I've learned? Number three, restoration. Folks, this is huge. I need to have a habit of consuming restorational content for healing. Why? Because in areas of my life I am that matter, I am going to have pain and brokenness. And so I need restoration in my physical life, maybe. A restoration in my relationships, spiritual life, maybe even my professional life. So we consume restoration content for healing. Next, fourth mental food group, contemplation for perspective. I need to be contemplating. I need to be reading philosophy. I need to be reading theology. I need to be reading different worldviews of my own. Why? To expand my perspective and thus my depth. And number five, you've noticed so far in these mental food groups of education, inspiration, restoration, and contemplation, there's not a whole lot of fun there. Well, here's the fifth food group. The mental food group is, inspir excuse me, is imagination. It's imagination. So I love spy novels. I really do. I love reading about all these crazy spy novels, you know, Tom Clancy stuff, Brad Thor, he's a Nashville uh, resident. Now, I why do I do that? Because sometimes I need my brain to be filled with creativity and imagination and just let my brain rest. And imagination is a wonderful, healthy place for the mind. That's why we love movies. So what's the takeaway? When I feed my mind in those mental food groups, education, inspiration, restoration, contemplation, imagination. When I change my mental appetite, I change my life. When you change your mental appetite, what you put in your mind is what you focus on. And when we're intentional, oh my goodness, we're learning for growth. We're being inspired for a vision for a future. We're being restored for healing. We're contemplating for perspective. We are imagining for release. When you change your mental appetite, you change your life. What are you feeding your mind? This is The Ken Coleman Show. You were created to fill a unique role in and through your work. Now, some of you may be going, I have no idea what that is. Some of you may be saying, I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to get there. I felt all of those emotions. I've been where you are, and I can tell you, there's hope. That's why I wrote the book, From Paycheck to Purpose. You can make the income you want and the impact that you desire, and I know that you have what it takes. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it on a Friday, folks. I got the juice. Uh, did you know that project management is one of the fastest growing skills worldwide? Uh, economists are saying that the field, uh, the career path, if you will, of project management is expected to grow by 33% uh, through 2027. And that's why we are launching the second round of our 
popular course, Project Management 101. I'm teaching alongside our Ramsey Chief Technology Officer, Brendan Wojko. Uh, it's a three-week course. You'll walk away with tools and strategies that will help you confirm you want a career in project management and jumpstart your career in project management. Spots are limited. Don't wait. It's extremely affordable. And our first group absolutely loved it. So go check it out, RamseySolutions.com slash project, RamseySolutions.com slash project. All right, a couple of items to unpack for you folks because I'm a man of the people keeping you informed, keeping you equipped to be agile. Let's go in the news. All right, uh, first story from the BBC headline, why workers and employers are ghosting each other. This is a thing that I think is a troubling trend. I've talked about this many times on the show. Uh, so what is ghosting? Ghosting is, instead of a company uh, replying to you, sending you some notification, say, hey, thank you for uh, being a part of the interview process. We've selected another candidate. They just don't reply at all. At all. I mean nothing. Uh, on the employee side, uh, instead of a withdrawal from the employment process, or the interview process, rather, uh, you just don't show up. Like, we've heard stories of, of people not showing up for interviews. The interview's scheduled. Everybody's there. Uh, here we go. It's supposed to be 9 a.m. It's 9.15. Where's Larry? It's 9.25. Where's Larry? Let's call Larry's cell phone. Let's email Larry. Larry doesn't answer. Larry doesn't care. Right? He just doesn't care. That's ghosting. So wh that's the idea. Um, this is from a BBC article. And uh, I got to read just this quick little story in the article. Uh, they highlight a gal by the name of Laura who was invited for a final stage interview at a music corporation. She thought she was uh, on the cusp of landing a dream job. She passed through the first round phone interview. She met with all the team members in person. And uh, there was one meeting left, and that was to meet with the senior level executive. And the way it was positioned to her was uh, it was a formality. You know, the idea is that all your other interviews have gone well. And um, if this last conversation goes well, you're going to get the offer. And then nothing happened. She got initial guarantees that she would be joining the team. The email formally confirming this reality never happened. She would follow up to the firm's HR department only to receive non-committal replies. It was always me instigating it. And the last message I got was promising to contact me as soon as they had more information and then never heard from them again. So the term ghosting I originally came out of the online dating world, right? And this is the whole nature of the digital world. We live in the online social media world where we're not physically talking to somebody. We're not in their presence. And it's all emails and online profiles. And so someone can literally go dormant. You don't know where they live. By the way, that'd be creepy to show up at their house anyway. And so now it's become a thing that ghosting is now happening in the professional world. Uh, there's other, another form of ghosting where people will quit their job and don't give notice. They just don't show up. Let's talk about Larry's obnoxious cousin, Lenny. All right, we talked about Larry ghosting. There, Lenny's the guy that quits his job and he doesn't come in and say, hey, listen, I'm going to give you two weeks' notice. I'm out. Lenny just doesn't show up for a shift. Call Lenny. Lenny ain't answering. Email Lenny. Lenny's deleting the email. Where's Lenny? And he's working for somebody else. That's become a form of ghosting. Uh, companies are adopting this awful uh, interaction or this lack of interaction, this awful habit, shall we say. And the reason companies are doing it is easier. Simply put, it's less work for HR uh, or hiring managers to reach out and communicate. And, and let me just tell you what ghosting really is. Ghosting is a decision that is based on a feeling that you don't matter. You don't matter. I don't need to communicate to you. We're not going to hire you. In other words, it doesn't matter. I mean, these companies are, these are professional people, supposedly, right? 
Uh, we could say they're professional in many ways. But to not reply to somebody, not let somebody know where they stand, this is you saying it doesn't matter, so they don't matter. The reason it doesn't matter, ghosting doesn't matter, You don't, it doesn't matter. I don't need to send them any kind of true information or real correspondence to let them off the hook, let them know we're not moving on with them. The reason it doesn't matter is because you don't think they matter. And the reason you don't think they matter is because you didn't choose them. But this is awful for your brand, leaders. It's awful for your personal brand. It's awful for the brand of your company. It's awful. People are going to talk about this stuff. Do we not think that this has consequences? Now, let me flip this. Those of you who ghost in the interview process, you just withdraw, but you never tell them. That's awful for your brand. You think that's not going to eventually track you or catch up to you? It will. Somehow, some way, it will. It's called character. Where did character go? Just to be a classy individual. Uh, those of you who just go, you know, like Lenny, my example, Larry's obnoxious cousin Lenny, you think, oh, you know what? These people treat me like crap. It's toxic. Never in a million years am I ever going to see these people again. Uh, I never work for them again. So you know what? I'm not going to show up. Screw them. Hey, that's what's happening. And you think, okay, well, that's fine. No, it isn't. It's not right. You think that not you don't think the potential for that to come back and haunt you? That's bad for your personal brand. They're gonna talk about you. It may never hold you from a job, but it is going to be a negative. What are we doing? This takes a little bit of class, companies, leaders, hiring managers, HR pros, shame on you. Those of you who quit the interview process, pull out and don't tell people, shame on you. Those who walk away from your job and don't tell anybody, shame on you. It's easy, but it's awful. All right, up next. Uh, fed up with long hours, many employees have quietly decided to take it easy at work rather than quit their jobs. This is from Business Insider. Fascinating stuff here. Um, Aki Ito is the author of this article uh, and calls out a job recruiter uh, who saw an opportunity to fulfill a different ambition. He liked his job. He just wanted to work less. He's starting to pay attention because he's in the recruiting business to the great resignation. He saw how employers he worked with were desperate to hold on to their workers. It gave him an idea. Companies have a vice grip on even moderately good employees. So I thought, what if I scaled back? Folks, this is un this is this is really, really interesting stuff. And I think it's spot on. By the way, the author has heard this conversation. Over the past few weeks, I've been talking to professionals like this guy who are strategically dialing back at work. Uh, during the pandemic, they came to see work as just that work. For the first time in their lives, they view their jobs as a source of a paycheck only, not a higher calling that demands their utmost devotion. And the pandemic created the ideal condi conditions to live out their new resolve. The hot job market has ensured their job security. So after feeling years of, of exploitation, from their employers, late nights, lost weekends, demand for loyalty, the tables have turned. In this sense, these professionals are mounting a secret resistance against the status quo. Hustle culture is over. And in some corners of corporate America, it's being replaced by a coasting culture. This guy's dialing back, and I, that's just her quotes, uh, the author. But I'm going to tell you something. People are dialing back big time, just like this example, because they realize They've kind of got companies in between a rock and a hard place. Can't lose them. They also realize their leaders aren't paying that much attention anyway. And they're downshifting. This is awful. Now, I'm telling you, it'll swing back. People won't just coast forever. They're going to want meaning. But leaders, you better pay attention to this. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Are you wondering if you should leave your current job or stay put? Well, you're not alone. That's why we created the Should I Quit My Job quiz. In just five minutes or less, this quiz will help you determine if you're at the right company and if you're in the right role. And if you need to make a move, you'll get practical steps to keep you moving forward. Folks, it's time to get unstuck. Life is too short not to do what you were created to do. Go take the quiz right now at kencoleman.com slash quiz.
All right, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, helping you make more money and experience more meaning in your work. I'm telling you, if you're loving that idea, think about that every week, every month, every year of your working life. More money and more meaning. And that's going to have a tremendous impact on your personal life. That's what we're about here. Roland is up next as we start our coaching sessions of the show, 844-747-2577 is the number to jump in. Let's go to Roland in Orange County, California. Roland, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Ken, how are you? I love what you do. You are amazing. Thank you so much for taking my call. Wow. Did my mom put you up to that? That is just <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. Your insight is so phenomenal i love it I'm, I'm i'm hooked i'm a big fan well thank you i'm gonna tell my kids what you said today when i go home i <laughs> doubt it's gonna change anything but i'm gonna try it how can i help you today uh well just a little bit of context here um i've been an educator for about 21 years uh love love my coworkers. love the school i'm at the environment super positive love working with students I currently have a hybrid position where i teach part-time and then i do some administrative work and coordinating programs but i feel like i'm like this midlife career crisis I feel like teaching is not what it used to be. Uh, back when I started 20 some years ago, all these initiatives, the politics, and, and even some of the episodes you had mentioned, some of the things that educators go through. And, and I personally experienced those things. So I feel like I took your career test, your career uh, assessment test, mm-hmm. read your book, and then it shares about how, you know, 75, 75% of our day should consist of our passion. Yeah. And I feel like I'm not experiencing that uh, mm-hmm. with my position. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm thinking, like, I thought about, like, maybe walking away, moving on and starting, like, a video production company, going back to personal training, or just going back to school and pursuing, like, media and, and, and broadcasting. But it's hard. It's hard to leave my job, um, at the retirement, the benefits, the income. I love my school, my coworkers, and I do enjoy being with students. Um, but I guess my, my dream job would be, like, to have, like, a, a video company and, pr- and create promotional videos and interview small business owners and really highlight their businesses and just be using my uh, talents and my gifts. But, um, so what, here, but, I'm sorry? but, but um, what? What's, okay, so what's, here, what's keeping you from coming up with a plan to make that happen? It, it's, in, it's in play. So here's my, my kind of my position. Oh. I, I don't... I love where I'm at and I, what I want to try to do, and this is something different. I want to run it by, see your thoughts. I want to try to repivot my position here in education. I love the field, but I want to, I'm trying to propose a, a position where I'd work with the school and the district and I would be doing what I really want to do. I'd be doing like interviews and creating these promotional videos on the people, the students, the programs, the activities, going to homecoming games, mm-hmm. interviewing the players and being kind of like a, a reporter broadcaster for the school mm-hmm. and, and create, uh, I kind of close the gap between the community and the school. Mm-hmm. And that would be ideal. That would be my dream up dream job, to be honest. And so I, I pitched it. I'm waiting for a response from my higher ups. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess my question is if I'm if this position, that would be my dream job, just going out and mm-hmm. highlighting, doing promotion videos, interviewing, being in front of the camera and, mm-hmm. And, and encouraging people and, and recognizing. So you would rather do that to, so I'm interrupting here because I want to really focus you in. So uh-huh. you would rather do that for your, is it a high school, middle school, elementary school? What is it? it it's a high school. Okay, but so I would like to start it, start the high school and then move on to the other schools nearby right. just to generate that. So you would, so the dream out. job is not the first idea you said was a dream job, which is fine. There's levels here. That's cool. So the, the ultimate mountaintop as you see it today is uh, telling stories, the video production company that's, that promotes the, um, not just your local high school, but all the high schools in the district. Yeah, I, that would be the perfect dream job. Yeah. And then, and then, however long I can do that, yeah, I would move on and start my own side business. That, I guess that'd be my second dream job, like going and kind of retiring early and doing something like that on the side as a, so, as a small business. Well, but it wouldn't be on the side if we were. It, you know what I mean? It's like right because I, I, my, I mean, let's play this out. Do you want to do this? For the let's just say that um, the education uh, department or the school board or whoever's got to say you know the principal whatever let's say we fast forward this deal and you got the gig, okay? Mm-hmm. So you're doing this for all of the public schools in Orange County and you know blah blah blah. You're creating all this positive propaganda. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long do you do that before you go? What I then I go work for myself and I'm doing this 
either as now a contractor for the school system or I'm doing this for a bunch of small businesses. In your mind, right now, and we're not going to hold you to this, how long before you do that? How long before I move on? To work for yourself. To work for yourself. Oh, you know, I guess it'd be based on just the response, just how. No, 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 no. I told you, (laughs) I gave you a, I gave you a reality that you were doing this dream job for the school district at large. You're doing that thing. Uh And I'm saying you're crushing it. They're happy. You're happy. How long before you would want to move out and work for yourself, bringing in that small business component? Uh, I don't, you know, honestly, I don't know. I think if, if I really enjoyed doing this for the school, I think I would just do it as long as All right. I, perfect. All right. Yeah. That's yeah. what I, you see where I'm going here. I'm mm-hmm. trying to yeah. get, I'm trying to get your heart totally out here on the table. Mm-hmm. All right. So you pitched this to the school system. All right. There's, a, there's, there's, there's probably, I'm thinking three ways this is going to go. Okay. One, uh-huh. they come back and go, Roland, this is a great idea. And we're going to get the budget approved for this, and we're going to pay you full time to do it. Uh, we're going to replace you in your current role, and is eventually transition you into this new role. That's one option. The other option mm-hmm. is, hey, we don't have the budget for that right now. You know, we've got this, this, and this, uh, but we'd love for you to try to do it on the side a little bit. If you have got the time, you know, right now we don't have any money for it, but we love the idea, and we'd like to see you maybe prove the concept. That's that's one option, I think. And then the mm-hmm. other option is, eh, we don't really need it right now. It's just something that we just don't feel the values there. That's the third option. Would you agree that's probably a good summary of what the response could be? Yes. Yep. Okay. I see those three options playing out. Okay, great. So if they come back with the first option, well, it's a no-brainer. Yoo-hoo! You know, we're popping champagne, and it's going to be a, a blast. If it's the second option... You've got to decide, are you willing to do that? And I think it's a strong likelihood it's the second option. And at that point, I would not be discouraged, but you're going to have to manage your time, budget your time, if you will, and find ways to do that and really build the case Mm -hmm. for this. If it's the third option, then you go, all right, I'm a little scared, but I don't need to be scared. Ken says I don't need to be scared because I'm not going to just jump out of a plane here. I'm going to stay in my teaching position with the good pay, the good colleagues, and the good benefits. And we're going to start the production company on the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to build the production company until the production company's got three to six months of your current salary in the bank because we're not going to live off of any of the money. Any money we spend on the production company is to grow the production company. And we get the production company spending off enough revenue and enough leads or potential clients to where you're going to make a very easy transition with no fear, no jumping. We're talking Mm -hmm. strolling, baby, strolling (laughs) into your dream job. Do you understand? I do. I do. Thank you. That is awesome. So that's the process. Okay. So okay. you know what the scenarios are. You know what to do okay. if any one of the three scenarios happen. And you got this. Okay? Awesome. Yeah, man. Wow. Hey, really cool. the Thanks. best is yet to be, my friend. Thank you for encouraging my heart. Uh, Joe, if we could, it would be great to cut the audio and video out of Roland saying all those wonderful things about me. And I'll just walk around my house playing it on my phone just to make my teenagers roll their eyes. Uh, that's a kind of a fun dad thing. I like to get back at the old kids there. Uh, very nice, man. Thank you, Roland, for um, for listening to the show. Thanks for trusting me on that. Um, I love that call. And I'll tell you why I love that call. Because I think Roland represents a lot of you. You really do have a desired future, a dream. And you feel as though it's almost silly. I choose that word very intentionally. You feel it's almost silly to think about it because it represents leaving something that seems to be very smart and stable. Think about it. Roland said, I love teaching. I actually love my colleagues. He feels very fairly compensated. And he says he's got great benefits. That's those handcuffs that we got to be careful about. This is the Ken Coleman Show.
According to Glassdoor, the average job offer attracts over 250 applicants. So if you've made it to the interview, you've already made a great impression. So now is your time to showcase how you are the best choice for this role. That's why we created How to Win the Interview. This free guide will walk you through the five strategies to help you stand out amongst the competition. With just a little intentionality, you can prepare yourself to win the interview. To get it, go to kencoleman.com slash interview. All right, welcome back, folks, to the Ken Coleman Show, helping you make more money and experience more meaning, increasing your income and your impact. Not just enjoying the fulfilling part of your work, but to see that it is making the lives of other people better. You are leaving a legacy as well. Uh, Latasha is going to join us next in Los Angeles, California. Latasha, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Oh, uh, hi. Thank you. You bet. How can I help today? Well, I just have a question because this stuff has been on my mind. Um, um, I don't know. How do I know that I, if I should be self-employed or if I should just work for a regular like, nine-to-five or company? Oh, that's a really good question. Am I a am I a work for myself kind of lady, or am I a work for somebody else kind of lady? I think you already have an opinion on that. I think you might be torn a little bit. But when I put it that way, what's your answer right this second? Um, my answer is I think I should work for myself, should be self-employed. Yeah, um, but you can't. Yeah, because... But you can't right no. now. Okay. Not right now. I love that. So you already answered that question. So now I want to help you bridge, build a bridge to that future. The bottom line is you would much rather work for yourself. Okay, so now we go, what must be true for you to be able to work for yourself? Well, there's several things. First and foremost, we got to have an idea or two or three. So we got to generate some ideas about how I could work for myself. So in other words, what's your best business idea? And that's not going to just be one thing. We got to come up with two or three or four, maybe 10 or 20. And we go, okay, we got to first come up with some ideas for the business. And then we got to go through the process of selecting the best one, the best idea. And then we got to launch it. Okay. So there's a three-step process here. And after we launch it, now that's just getting it going. Then we got to grow it and we got to grow it to a point on the side because we got to work. We need income. So we're working a full-time job while launching this side job, which is ultimately your dream job working for you. And so we're going to grow it and we're going to have to grow it. We have to be patient and we grow it to a place where we could step away from the day job into the dream job. So that's the process. Let's call it four major steps. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So we first start by going, all right, I need a really solid, you get to determine what solid means. That's what pay you need, what kind of culture you need in a day job working for somebody else. Because that's the stage that we build by which we're going to eventually step into our desired future. So we need stability. We need a platform, if you will, right? A foundation. So what is the best opportunity? Because you don't want something that's draining you. So if okay. you're if you're in a job that drains you, because maybe, um, you know, it's not in your sweet spot, right? So if we could find a sweet spot day job, at least you enjoy yourself because you're using what you do best, your talent to do work you love, passion, to produce results that matter you matter to you mission. That's going to keep you in a really fired up space that that feeds you energy, right? Not drains energy from you because you're going to be expending energy in the form of physical, mental, and emotional energy to launch your side hustle, correct? Right. right. So um, I'm going to give you my get clear career assessment, okay? Have you taken okay. it by any chance? You know about it? Um, I never took, took the assessment. Well, it's my gift to you. Here's why. I want you to take it. You're going to get a detailed report on your talent, what you do best, your passion, work that you love to engage in, and then your missional results that naturally motivate you. And so once you get those detailed reports, I'm going to take your top scores, your top results, and we put it in a purpose statement. And when you get that purpose statement, you're going to read it 
Latasha, and you're going to go, huh, now this is a high-level job description. I'm going to go look for jobs that match up with that purpose statement. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Excellent. And we want to get one of those jobs. It's not our long-term play, but it's our short-term day job. And then we got to go through the process of figuring out your business idea. Now, I'm going to give you some quick notes on how to come up with the business ideas. There's three basic questions I want you to answer over the days and weeks ahead. Keep answering them every day. Come back to them. Change the okay. answers. Here you go. Ready? Number one, who are the people that I would want my business to help? Business is in the business of helping people. Who are the people that I want my business to help? What problem do those people have? or desire. And then the third question, what are the solutions to their problem or desire that my business could provide? There's where your ideas come from. Hang on the line. We'll get you the assessment. According to Glassdoor, the average job offer attracts over 250 applicants. So if you've made it to the interview, you've already made a great impression. So now is your time to showcase how you are the best choice for this role. That's why we created How to Win the Interview. This free guide will walk you through the five strategies to help you stand out amongst the competition. With just a little intentionality, you can prepare yourself to win the interview. To get it, go to kencoleman.com slash interview. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, helping you win in work and in your life. Here's what I know. I know that every one of you was created to work. If I change that word, some of you just got indigestion. You're like, I need the Pepsi at AC. Where's the Maalox? But if I change that one word there at the end of that, you were created to contribute. You'd go, okay, now that I that I get. And that's what I know. You were created to contribute. You were created to fill a unique role in this world. You are needed and you must do it. Somebody out there needs you to be the best version of you. I want to help you figure out what that is and watch what happens. You will increase your income and you will also increase your impact. And then Monday morning isn't going to suck anymore. By the way, something else I know when people say, oh, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, that's crap too. Uh, somebody said that, and, it, and I know what they meant, but it's garbage because I love what I do, and I work my freaking tail off. And that's why I work my freaking tail off because it's bigger than me. It's not about money. It's not about status. It's about legacy and contribution. So that sounds good to you. You are in the right place. We'll coach you up. That's why we're here. We're going to teach you. We're going to inform you. And then we coach you. That's what the show is all about. Uh, I do want to say really quickly, we've got our, our, our diehards over here that are in the chat room on YouTube uh, as we're live on uh, YouTube. And uh, so um, uh, I want to address one thing here. Um, Mr. E said, I took Ken's Get Clear assessment and I don't exactly agree with my report on talents. Mr. E, I am so glad you shared that. That doesn't bother me. But here's what I know. I've talked to several people who've said that. And then I've I've been able to talk to them and they explain where they think it's off. And I have them reread the description and I read it back to them and they go, oh. Or they've gone and talked to people who know them very, very well. And they've said, what do you think about this assessment? And almost every time the person goes, it's exactly you. Uh, Mr. E, you're the one that answered the questions. Therefore, you need to go back. And I want you to get some feedback from three or five people who know you really well. And then we'll see where we're at. I think there's an interpretation issue because that's what we do with words. And uh, I want you to dive deeper. All right? Not because I need to be right because this has nothing to do with me. They're your answers. Dive deep with feedback. Stay with this process. All right. Thanks for the uh, input, though. I love that. All right. Um, back to the phones we go. Uh, Kayla joins us in Springfield, Illinois. Kayla, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. How are you? I'm living the dream, Kayla. What are you doing? Awesome. Um, I'm enjoying the sunshine and some, some warmth for Is the it, first time in a while. <laughs> can, can I just say amen to that? 
Uh, we're yeah. supposed to be in the <laughs> 80s today, and uh, I can't wait. I mean, the minute I'm done today, I'm getting the shorts on. God, I, <laughs> for first of all, my legs uh, need some sun. You know what I mean? I'm afraid, Nathan, that when I put my shorts on today, if the sun hits them just right, uh, the astronauts in the International Space Station will report a solar flare. That's how that's how pale I am, if you know what I'm saying, Kayla. Yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, too much information mean. for your for all of our listeners and viewers. <laughs> What's going on? How can I help? Okay, so I have been in my current um, place of employment for the last four and a half years. They are. I'm my first um, administrative type of job. Um, I had managed a group for quite a while and I was frankly, I was burnt out. So I started looking for other opportunities within the organization. Um, and I decided to move from management into sales. And so I am there now, mm -hmm. um, currently, just kind of learning what the sales is all about mm -hmm. and also still partially doing my previous job. Um, cause I, you know, I'm a brain that did it for a while. So still kind of helping that team as they haven't found a replacement yet. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know that I'm, I might be having that grass is greener situation. Like you describe a lot of the time, Yeah. but what I'm looking at is possibly, um, leaving now based on some cultural situations that are going on. And also, um, I've had an opportunity practically fall into my lap that I hadn't considered before, but it may offer something that's more directed toward my talent. Great. So I here's just, what I want you to yeah. do. I want you mm -hmm. to pursue this new opportunity, like your life depends on it. I re okay. I mean, research it from every angle possible. Think about mm -hmm. some very specific questions that you want to ask about to determine what the culture is like. Do research on the company and how they treat their customers, what are their customer ratings, how they treat their vendors. Find somebody that knows somebody in that company and get on the phone with, get real feedback for people that work there and just do your homework to see if this is in fact a healthy culture. You got to really research that stuff. And then right. in the interview process, determine, is it a sweet spot fit for you? Does it allow you to spend the majority of your day doing work you're really good at, talent? Does it allow you to spend the majority of your day doing work you really love, passion? Does it allow you to spend the majority of your day creating results that matter deeply to you? That's mission. Talent plus mission plus, excuse me, talent plus passion plus mm -hmm. mission equals purpose. Mm -hmm. You're on purpose and you'll know this connects to my why. Okay. Right. Now, once yeah, we determine perfect. that, don't look back. Right. Oh, I did. I, uh oh, I, oh, I detected a little <laughs> something there. There was a, no, I totally, there was a little bit I of know. a, uh, uh, I'm going to call that a, uh, sigh and a giggle combo. Wasn't that? <laughs> Yeah. So why is that? Just, why was there a sigh and a giggle? So I've done the research. Um, it's actually like a company that I'm pretty familiar with already. Um, I have a person that I know, an acquaintance that I researched. I called them, I asked them about it. And so they said it was a great, great place to go. Um, I don't know. I think the fact that I did really work hard to get into the position that I'm at now and uh, I just am anxious about it, you know, like anxious about the future that I could potentially be missing at my current job, even though I'm not sure that it, that it's going to be fulfilling. Okay. So wait a second. Wait, 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 Okay. Wait, 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 wait. So the kids call this FOMO fear of missing <laughs> yeah. out. Mm -hmm. and so you're dealing with some FOMO. And so I love chasing this because it's fear. Fear of missing out. Yeah. You're afraid that if you take this other company that looks like a really great opportunity, that you're going to miss even better opportunity where you're at. So is fear telling you the truth or is fear holding you back? It's one of the other. You have yeah. to investigate that fear. Is there a ladder of opportunity for you that is wildly attractive to you at your current company? You have to go research that and figure it out. It's not hard. But you may right. be afraid of something that's not real. It's like my kids telling me, Dad, there's a monster under my bed. 
My kids really believed there was a monster under the bed. The only way I could convince my kids there wasn't a monster under the bed is to crawl under the bed and reemerge with my head still on my shoulders. And they're like, okay, it didn't bite dad's head off. I can go to sleep. Now, I mean, you laugh, but that's really what kids are dealing with. And that's what you're right, dealing right. with. You have created this thing in your mind um, or your mind is doing what it's supposed to do, which is protect you. I got you. So I'm, I'm helping you here. Is fear protecting you from leaving and going to a company that you're going to end up blow? You're going to miss out on something, or is fear holding you back? That's what you have to determine. I cannot do that for you. Go do the research. So it sounds like my homework assignment for you is research, 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 and more research. Let's look at the opportunity before us. Let's look at our current situation and what's right. And folks, this is about getting clear so that we can make confident decisions. Uh, some of you are ready to move on. We are still in the hottest job market we've ever seen. 3.4% unemployment. Companies are paying incredible money, great benefits, signing bonuses, free tuition. Some of you are still scared to put yourself out there. That's why I endorse the number one hiring site in America, and it's free to you. ZipRecruiter, their technology makes it super easy for you. In minutes, you go to ZipRecruiter.com, you fill out a profile, attach your resume, watch what happens. They begin to push you and pitch you. When they find a company that goes, hey, we're interested, they send it to you. And with one click, you apply. Go check it out, ZipRecruiter.com. You matter. You have what it takes. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.